spring it's been really dry um, all winter it was really wet and as soon as spring hit the water faucet shut off and it's just been totally dry um, since we planted this garden I think we've gotten one rain uh, probably close to an inch but other than that that's about all we've got and it is June the 16th today um, so we've been at least eight weeks with probably less than an inch of rain. So what we have to do is we have to fill up every bucket that we own, fill them up with water, um, drag it down here to the to the garden, and we just take it one five gallon bucket at a time, and we just water each plant. Um, and Lydia takes the uh, bucket, she waters the uh, onions and the beans and the rows. So it's really a job to do this. It's really a hassle. So. I'm hoping by next week I've got another option uh, to water the garden, the garden other than having to fill up all my buckets. But you'll have to stay tuned to see what kind of plan I've got worked up for that. Um, but we water about every other day, as dry as it is now. Um, it's usually about every other day. And this spring has been really cool and humidity levels have been really low. So typically here, in June, especially last year in June, as soon as June 1st hit, it was 95 degrees every day and high humidity, probably till the end of June. So it was really hot. And this year, I mean, we're just barely getting, you know, low 80s, but we've had no humidity. And in this area, about the only time we're gonna get showers this time of the year is on hot, humid days with the afternoon thunderstorms. So we haven't had that, so we're having to resort to this. And if you watched uh, a video, I think it was the last video, a little before that, um, I did a video on mulching um, the garden with the grass clippings. So that really helps hold the moisture in. Um, we were going about every three days when water, but now since it's so dry and it's windy too, we're watering about every other day. So. I'll take you in the garden and show you how the grass clipping mulch has worked out um, as far as weed control and moisture control. So let's go in the garden and look at that. A couple of videos ago, we did a video on putting our garden up. This is a brand new garden fence. And this, we have never gardened in this area. Um, we didn't use the whole garden um, and we actually planted most of our stuff pretty far away. This is more or less just a trial year to see how th things grow. Um, but here we've got our uh, field peas and that's what I like the best is field peas. So we've got several different rows of that. They're really not planted that close together. The, the grass clippings that I do, every time I mow the yard, I, uh, I save the grass clippings and I spread them out and let them dry. You know, there's no weeds anywhere. Um, I don't mulch very heavy up against the base of the plant so it can breathe and you'll get a few weeds in there but not much so these peas right here are planted a little bit those three rows are planted a little later than these rows were to not have as much rain as we've had they really look good see all the grass clippings in here and it's taken you know a couple months to to get this amount of grass clippings um, every time i mow once a week um, I get enough to probably cover, I don't know, three rows. So every week I get three rows covered. And here's our onions. Onions look good. And we've got a few pepper plants. We have peppers. But our squash, it just went crazy. I just don't understand. I have never seen squash plants this big. That is, that's three plants. And I spaced them out just because I had the room and it's a good thing I did. Usually my squash plants, you know, after the first month or so, it gets that squash bug on it. It kills the plant, but I've been fighting the boogers, so I think I'm winning the war on that. And we've been getting, we've already gotten a, a lot of squash, which you can see down in here, how I many we've picked. And there's a lot of blooms coming on. There's squash to be picked today. And we started out here with just two cucumbers um, and I just let them run on the ground this year. Normally we would put them up on the fence, but we had so much room, um, we just let them run on the ground. And over here, we actually picked our first cabbage, I think two evenings ago. I think it measured 
about 10 inches in diameter, so it was really big. So we'll be eating on that one cabbage head for a while. And we planted one other one, and it's a little bit smaller. It didn't grow quite as big as the other. Now my tomatoes, um, my tomatoes haven't been doing that well. They look pretty good now, but um, when I first planted, I planted early. Usually around here, we try to wait till the 1st of May. Well, the weather was so warm in April, I kind of got the bug and I went ahead and planted. And unfortunately, we had two frosts at the end of April. I covered them. I put a big tarp up over the trellis here and kept them covered. But the first frost we had was unexpected. We woke up one morning and it was like 30, 34, 35 degrees. And they were calm for like 45. So the tomatoes got bit just a little bit. Um... I know these ones on the end got bit, so it kind of stunted the growth a little bit, but they're coming on better now. Um, the ones down here on the end, I think these were the two that that didn't get bit. And you can tell that they're just, I mean, they've got lots of, lots of tomatoes on them. These two plants are doing really good. This one over here, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of tomatoes on it too. But if anybody has a cure for this, please let me know, because this is what's happening most of the time to my tomatoes. You see these blooms here? These blooms will put on and the vine will dry up. It does, the vine doesn't get real thick and heavy and the blooms dry up and they fall off. And I've had that problem for the last couple of years. Um, I mean, you just see this one right here. You can see, I mean, that just doesn't look real healthy. And they're not putting on any tomatoes. Not these on this end anyway. And I'm not quite sure what it is. See, that one right there looks pretty good. But there's just not, they're just not putting on any tomatoes. And you see this vine right here. Well, that one's got just a little, little bitty tomato on it. Yeah, those two, these right here are putting on pretty good. I see one there and I see one there. But normally, but you see how thick this vine is? Normally, when they come up like that, they just stay really small and they just dry up and it falls off. I'm not sure what that's called. So if anybody knows what that is and how to prevent it, just let me know. It could be a calcium deficiency in the ground, which I know I have. So we'll just have to tackle that one and this tomato plant right here I replaced it because it just it didn't do anything I think it got bit really hard and I got three Roma tomatoes here and over here I got three more squash plants and that's normally how I plant them because I've never seen them get that big so these three are planted really close together and they're already growing growing together but they look good. They're not putting on quite as many blooms as the the others were, but they're doing pretty good. And I've got uh, another leftover cucumber plant. We've been picking tons of cucumbers. So we got plenty of those to eat. And I planted one more tomato there because we like to freeze uh, tomatoes for sauces and stuff like that, which really comes in handy. But all this area here is is covered in uh, grass clippings. And usually, and I don't know if you can see it here. Now we don't water, we don't water in the rows, we water right up right up against the right up against the um, the plants. Let me find another spot here. Let me go here. Here's one that's that cage on. But I can just take this back. And it's really it's dry. I mean, it's wet down there at the base of the plant because I, I keep my water right down there at the base. But right now, these, these grass clippings are pretty much just keeping all the, the grass out. We haven't had to, we haven't had to do anything. Every now and then, you can come and there'll be just a little weed right there. And we'll just grab it and just pull it up. And that's it. I mean, it, it's keeping the grass down. One thing I hate about gardens is weeding. And I'm glad I came up with this idea to put out the grass clippings so it should do good but everything looks good considering 
we've had no rain. I know my tomatoes would look a whole lot better if we'd been getting some actual rain. You know, I can water this every day and keep them soaking wet. And I think it just pretty much keeps them alive and they grow, but nothing like a, a good inch rain would do. It's, it's just amazing the difference between um, rain water and just regular well water. And that's what I have. I have a well. So I've got plenty of water. So it's not that big of a deal to to haul all this water to the garden. But like I said, we, we cover up, I fill up every barrel, every barrel I've got. I don't know how many gallons I've got, but I fill up, I fill up every bucket we have. And this usually does the job. I can get in there and just drown the plants pretty good. It does a good job. So what I'll do next is I'll just, I'll grab two buckets and I'll go down at the very end and I'll start watering until we get it all done. Two buckets at a time. Hey, I'll just take my bucket. I got a big cup here. I'll just get a full cup of water and I'll find where I planted and I'll just, I'll just dump the water in right at the base. Now all these plants were, were plants. They were not seeded in the ground. So what I did was I dug a hole in the area, filled it up with some good soil. So that's the area right there that I'm watering. And that water is just going straight down in there. Now all this soil here is clay. And stuff grows pretty good in it, but I've got to do a lot of work on it this fall to get some compost and some, and some other stuff in it to make the soil a whole lot better. But I put five or six cups on each plant. And that seems to, to soak it pretty good. You know, if we do it every other day, I mean, it, it stays pretty, pretty damp down in there. But now around the plant, it's dry as a bone. But most of the root ball is just in that one spot. Look at a time. Well, this is basically how we get the water to our garden to keep this thing going while we're not having any rain. Um, this coming week, they're calling for really good chances of rain. So hopefully we won't have to do any of this water for the next couple of weeks. But tune into our next video and we'll show you how we have made our watering process down here a whole lot easier. Thanks for watching.